Hello and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. My name is Legion and today I'll be taking you through how to do livery painting with Blender for the A320neo. Now there is a link in the description for a plugin that you will require to be able to complete this tutorial. Firstly, I suggest opening that up. Now I've already got mine here. Click the link. Once this page is open, just scroll down and under where it says latest release download, there's this link, simply click that and you'll notice that'll download a file just here. Now I've already got a copy, but once that's downloaded, we can simply close that, open Blender. Once that's open, don't worry about this for now. Click edit, go to preferences, add-ons, click install. And we just want to go to where we downloaded that to. So mine was the downloads folder. I'm going to sort that by date modified. You can see there we've got mine there. So IO MSFS GLTF. Single click that so it's highlighted and then simply hit install add on. Now, what you should see down the bottom here it says modules installed. We'll say location. That'll only be there for a brief second, so pay attention. And then we're going to search for it. So GLTF. Now, mine's already enabled because I did already have this installed, but you might have this box unchecked. Simply check the box and then we can continue. So what we want to do before we import is to clear our scene. So simply press A on your keyboard and then hit delete. That'll get rid of everything that's currently in here and just leave us with an empty collection. Then we want to go to file, import, go down to where it says MSFS GLTF. Click that. And this is where you want to know the location of your install. For me, it's in my app data folder under Microsoft. So I'm just going to locate that here. I've already saved the bookmark, but I'll go back for those of you who want to follow along. So you can see here, this is my app data folder. For you, uh, if you're running Steam, it'll be in your roaming file. For those of you that are using Microsoft, it'll be under local, uh, which once in there, you'll need to find one here that says packages. Scroll through this. Obviously, I don't have Flight Simulator on here from the Microsoft store. But you want to find the one that says Microsoft Simulator and then a bunch of numbers. Once you're in there, it's very much the same to get to where we need to be. So I'm going to go roaming. I'm going to locate my Flight Sim folder. Uh, there, Microsoft Flight Simulator. We want to go to Packages. And then you can see I've got a couple other folders in here. You probably only will have Official and maybe Community. I want to simply open Official. Go to Steam. Yours might say One Store here. Once you open that, you just want to find the A320neo. So you can see here, if you've installed the Aviators Club lately, there'll be another one there. We're going to scroll down until we just find the A320neo. Okay, well, because I'm blind, I'm just going to go up to the search bar and type A320. It should bring up all of them. And then we want to select the one that says the Sobo aircraft A320neo. Open that up. Then go to Sim Objects, Airplanes. A320neo, and we just want to find the one that says model. So model by itself, open that one, and we want to find the lowest one that says not interior. We're not doing that, we're doing exterior. So we we'll to select here the A320neo LOD00. So you want to find the one with the lowest number. That's going to be the most detailed version of this for you. So simply double click that to open or single and then import. Give it a second, and once it's imported, zooming is just your scroll wheel. And you can see it starts to clip as I zoom out a little bit. So what we want to do, this is part of the livery that the game uh, has by default. It's actually made into the model. So there's no way to delete it as such, um, but we just want to get it out of our current viewport. So simply left click on those areas and then hit delete. We've got another one there. So we just want to click. So you can keep clicking until it highlights those areas. So you can see here, it's got all that clipping highlighted currently, then I can hit delete, and then that takes that off there. So if you wanna rotate the model around, just hold in your middle mouse button with nothing else, click down, and you can rotate your view. If you want to snap to view, you can do the same, but holding alt, and that will snap to each side. So you can see here, we've got a bit more on the door, so we can click on that, then hit delete again, now, if you need to like go across, hold shift and then middle mouse button and you can click and drag around the model as required. So we're going to go here. We've got a little bit more. We're going to delete. 
like so. And then I'm just going to go back to 3D, like so. Now, don't worry too much about what's on the tail here. That's not going to be in today's video. We're basically just showing you how to do the fuselage with the tail and rudder combined. I'm actually redoing one of the Australian liveries in this video, doing the Virgin Australia. I've already got my assets. I'd suggest uh, for Blender, you'll need it in a PNG format. It's definitely the one that works best. And if you're doing something like a 8K design, I suggest getting a high quality image as well. So what we want to do here is select our door, number one, hold shift, select the fuselage, which will be number two point, and the tail here, so the rudder. And then we want to rotate around, just make sure there's no other doors that we want in. So here we've got a cargo door, same thing, shift click. Uh, another cargo door, we can't select that one. Uh, and we can select that back door there. And the lighter orange uh, actually means, sorry, actually means that's your current selection. So that's the last one you selected. So if you're joining them together for whatever reason, uh, that would be why. All right, so now what we want to do, we want to get rid of all the wings and all the other junk that we don't need. So you can simply do that by pressing Shift on your keyboard and H, which will isolate the model. Now, to make this a little bit easier for you, I would select the whole model. So left click and drag, which will select everything, and then just hit Slash. And that centers it on this uh, viewport. So that's just your forward slash. If you want to use your numpad, that will lock you to certain views. So for example, seven is your top down, one is your front on, three is uh, your left side, and then nine is your right side. And then of course you have the option to go underneath and upwards, which is just two and eight, four and six, move you that way. Um, I believe that's it for the shortcuts. Anyway, now we have this, and this seems to be where a lot of you guys get stuck. So what we firstly want to do is select our fuselage. Now, obviously there's no texture on it at the moment, which is why you can see all the, the lines coming through. So what I'd suggest you do is select the fuselage. Now you can see all this junk over here on the right, which is pretty irrelevant. But you can see if we click to this little world icon here, it tells us what texture it's using. So fuselage does that whole area, which generally, if we click the door, you can see fuselage is still selected, meaning that that door is part of the fuselage file. So if you're struggling to locate anything, you can simply go in here and click away and it will basically keep updating. So if I click at the back here, you'll see this changes to the wings. So you can see that says wings now. We go back to the main model, we got fuselage. So these are different textures. So if you're in the sim, you need to make sure that they're both uh, like the wings texture, which will be the wings, your pretty much anything that moves, so flaps um, underneath the landing gear, things like that are generally part of that file. Um, so like brake lines and all that I believe is in there. I can't remember exactly, but anyway, once we get that done, we, what we want to do is go into our texture paint mode. So you can go up the top here and click texture paint and you'll see it goes all like pink. And currently that's showing the selected model for us. So you can see that even though the door is part of that file, it's not highlighted because it wasn't like that. It's a separate object within that file. So we're just wanting this here for the time being. What we actually want to do, you can see here with our little spanner and screwdriver option selected. Under here, it says no textures. Now this is the really important part. This is why some people will just see this pink and nothing else. What we want to do is hit the little plus icon next to here, which will add the texture paint, and we want to go base color. Now, this is currently a 1K texture. If you do asterisk, and then let's say you're trying to do a 4K texture, you would put four. For me, I'm doing 8K today, so I'll do asterisk eight, which will change that to the four by four multiple of whatever that number was to start with, so 1024. And we do the same for the other one and get that to there. Now for Virgin, their planes are white. So I just want to simply change that to white for the color. You can do that by clicking on the color itself and then selecting within here. If you do have your own uh, color option, uh, let's say a hex code from Photoshop or something, simply hit the hex and then you put that in there like so. Once you've done that, close that off, leave alpha on, you can basically leave everything else fine and hit okay. 
Now you can see straight away that that has changed to white, which is perfect. Now, what I suggest doing so you can sort of just flow through uh, the workflow is going through and do this for each one before you start to paint. So what I suggest to do for that is go back up here to where you've got layout, select layout, which will bring you back to this. Then click on like your, your tail, which will be your wings file. And you'll see we don't have that option until we're in the texture painting mode. So we go texture painting, and then we've got no textures here. I'm gonna add another base color. It pre-saves our width and height, which is perfect because it needs to be in multiples of four for it to work in the sim. And we leave it as wings base color, hit OK. And notice the tail's now changed too. Now what we can do is if in your viewport here, we hit tab, it takes us back to edit mode, which you can see all the faces. And then what you do up here is where it says edit mode, just change it to object. Once it's that, you can see it's got it highlighted like we had before. That will mean that you can always see your UV window. Now we want to select the door here and then go up to our object mode, change this back to texture paint. And you can see it's now the same color. So if we zoom out here on the left-hand side, if it wants to, there we go. Which is just your scroll key again on your mouse. See, it's just a white texture at the moment. That's because we haven't painted anything on. So what I suggest is to try and get this here, this middle option to an area where you like to begin with, simply for the fact that if you change this whilst you've got your stencil out for your text or logo or whatever it is, when you change it, it actually resizes the model, meaning that if it's if you've got it set for a, a size on one side of the aircraft, you then have to pretty much take a guess for the opposite side, unless it's something that you can mirror, which I'll show you um, pretty much the key components in this, which are mirroring, um, of course, lining up text on the other, like the opposite side if you need to, as well as how we work with the, the tail and rudder and all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna hit one on my keyboard, which will bring you to the face on view again. And we've got everything, everything we need in here. So if you're doing engines or anything like that, you can have that enabled. Same process applies to any part of the aircraft. Um, all right, so three will bring us to the right hand side. Now I just wanna get this into perspective. So again, shift middle mouse button. Um, and then we're going to start with our mirroring of the front logo. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and get the front nose of the plane up. Now what I want to do next is we go down to, uh, so here we've got, see the little like, checker box icon? Go into there and you can see brush. We want to go new and then that'll make a texture. So this one we're going to call front logo like so, and then go to where it says open. We'll open that up. Now I saved these before, I just got to remember where. So I've got mine here. I'm going to bookmark this as well, just because I know I'll be coming back to it. So add bookmark. You can see that's down the bottom there. Now logos. Now what we're doing here is the front logo for the version. So if I simply select that, open the image, you can see it puts our image in here. Now currently it's not showing anything in the viewport, which is fine. What we want to do now is go up to our little paint, uh, not paintbrush, screwdriver and spanner click that and we just scroll down a bit and you can see one of these options here say texture. Now once I've got that up you can see the logo that we're trying to put in currently says tile. If we change that to stencil right away you'll see that pops up in here. Now you can see it's not actually the size that I need that in here currently. So we want to simply go to image aspect and you can see it's stretched it out and just make sure that that's the way you need it. So this is actually from the other side. So I'm going to flip my view over to this side, like so. And if I hold shift, I can reposition my window. So, sorry, right click on the stencil itself and you can drag that around. Now shift, right click lets you scale it. So if it's too big, too small, do that. Now I do suggest getting a vector if possible um, of the logo. If you need to make one, uh, there is a plugin uh, on a website which lets you get three images vectored for nothing. Um, it's called Ve Vector Magic. Um, you can choose a paid plan if you're doing a lot of this, which I'd, I'd suggest um, if you don't have the knowledge of creating your own vector. 
Alright, so shift right click and scale it. Now we want to get up our reference image here, which I have already got. So we want to have a look here. So it looks like the hand sort of finishes at the front of the first window and almost touches the back door. So if we go to the front of that one, hold shift, right click to scale again, and there's our back door. So then right click, I'm going to keep bringing this down. It's still a little bit too big. Oops. Still too big. Now the hand's finishing at the door. So we're probably looking at something like that almost. All right, so that's now in position. Now what we want to do is this stencil is already the color that we're after. So the gray, which is perfect. But what we're doing here, we want to mirror it. So you can see there I've scrolled um, as trying to move over. Now that will mean that the image gets resized. So that's all I was saying you've got to be careful of. Um, pay attention to if you scroll because then it will mean the image will be out of proportion on the other side. Once we're here, scroll down to where it says symmetry here. Open up this tab. And we want to mirror it on the x-axis, which will mean that it's going to put the exact same look onto the other side of the aircraft for us. So I've hit mirror X, and then we can just left click over our stencil and that'll begin to paint. What I was saying before about the object mode, you can see I've left the door selected. So the reason it wasn't painting there is because that's not part of the UV face that we had selected. So I've simply gone back to object mode, selected the fuselage now. Now I can go back to texture paint and we can click on that area and you'll see it's painting that in for us. Like so. So you can see if I zoom out again or zoom in, it begins to resize it again, which isn't what we want. Now I'm going to get my reference image back up here to make sure. So it is rather low down. The hand sort of lines up with almost the latch on the, the main door. Now this is an A321, I believe, not an A320, but very much the same anyway. So you can see it's almost where we need it. Probably could have gone down a little bit lower. So I can simply hit Control Z, which will undo. And now it looks like it's in the position. Hand is almost with the door line there and whatnot. So I left click and paint over this again. Just want to make sure all areas are covered as well, because if you do miss a bit, uh, you'll really hate yourself later down the track uh, once you export it, because unlike Substance Painter, where I can do this in layers, Blender um, sort of does it all on the one, one shot. Uh, so you can actually see here on our left window now, we've got that, uh, the painting that we've just done on there. So if I do a window swap, we're pressing numpad three and go to the other side. You can see it's painted on the other side for us, which is exactly what we're after. All right, so I'm going to go across now because we are going to put the Virgin Australia uh, text onto it. Make sure that obviously we still have the fuselage selected. Don't make the same mistake I did. But then we want to go back into here, hit our texture properties. And you can see we've got front logo again. What we want to do, I suggest anyway, going up to under your brush, hit the little duplicate icon, which will make a new texture. And then name this, uh, let's say, uh, text, because that will be the text part. And we want to go to the open folder again, do that. Now we're doing the text, open image. Now you can see it's all out of proportion once again. Go to our spanner and screwdriver, scroll down. That's updated that. Very image aspect spaces it out the way we need it. Make sure now you turn mirror off because if you mirror text, it will be backwards on the other side. So now obviously you can see this bit is too big. Um, we're gonna go back to our reference image real quick here. And you can see that it sort of starts, uh, well the A on the left hand side finishes at the second window and goes just onto the wing. Uh, looking at that now of something I have noticed in previous livery painting that I've done is that the A320neo doors, despite photos of the A320neo, the sim doesn't seem to have them in the same spot or they're missing windows that should be there that aren't um, and so on. So just keep that in mind. It may not always look exactly like the photo for the fact that the sim doesn't always have the function we need. 
So what I want to do is shrink this down a bit. I'm going to flip over to the other side because that's the one we have the image of. And we're just going to bring that down a bit, move it. So right click again to move it. Now, what we say, the A sort of finished at that first window, like so. So you can see here, I've got the doors selected, whatnot. So what we want to do now is left click again on that area. Once, make sure, obviously you've done the image aspect make sure it's all good and then just left click start painting that in make sure you go all the way up I tend to go over things a couple of times just for the fact that sometimes it doesn't want to paint exactly the way you need it or it'll miss things alrighty so you can see in doing that I've actually colored in a section of the window for the fact that it's come over uh, the window and now it's filling that in what you then want to do um, is I tend to get rid of our texture here and then paint over that before you finish in white just because in your file down here if I can navigate this properly there we are so you can actually see it started to paint sections of the window in there so you can see we've got the, the other side done now what I tend to do is I'll look at the lines like the pink lines and I'll find somewhere where it almost lines up so you can see here we've got the T lines up with the line that it's on. So then what I can do is flip to the other side. We know the V has to sort of end at the A. The T, that line goes the whole way across. So we want to make sure that that line's up there. Or the other way you can do it is count down from this solid pink line. So we're looking at what? One, two, three, four. Four lines down to the top of the A. So you just find the A on obviously the other side and do that. So here, I'm going to right click again to drag this. And we'll go sort of the start of the second window, like so. The T on the other side, so we can keep flipping, obviously. And where are we? T is lined up with that there. If you're a little bit under. So we're now under the line, swap back to the other side, we bring it across again, drop it a little bit, there we go, like so. So now we've got the other side sorted. So same thing, left click to paint. And you'll notice now once we let go of our left click, you can see on the on here that it now says virgin on both sides of the plane. Now what I can do here is up the top we've got wireframe so if you're trying to line it up and wanted to use the wireframe to do so you can definitely do that but this third option here is our shading which sort of will show us how it's going to look in the sim almost so if i drag that template out of the way you can see we've got that there as well as the text now a little bit of it looks like it might have been cut off by the window that's fine so what we can do now is i'll show you how to just clean up these windows so if we just hit the X, which will get rid of our texture, then we can actually paint over that. So once that's gone, just make sure this first color is whatever color you're trying to fix up and we can paint over that. And you can see that's got rid of all the overlapping uh, sections on there. So here is the hardest part that you'll do out of all your livery making. Um, so we need to, it looks like, the V overlaps on the left hand side and sort of wraps around the front almost. The G is just above the bit where the APU exit is. So if we flip over to the other side, like so. Now we want to go here again, go back down to our little grid, add another brush because we're adding now the tail logo. So go to tail. Uh, now this is the left side. I suggest if you have anything that's um, changed slightly between left and right, so obviously have two images to do two templates and so on. So what we'll do here, open, uh, we go back to my logo file. You can see I've got left and right side because the Virgin logo has a gray outline on it that actually does change. So we go back to Spanner, scroll down, image aspect. That's going to fix that up for us. Now, if I hold shift and right click, I can scale that again. Oops. 
one. That'll do. Holding control and right click allows us to rotate. So looking at the photo, it should look like it's about there. Now, because this image isn't exactly the highest quality, um, that was the highest I could get, but rotating and hold shift to move your viewport a little bit, like so. Right click to move that. And we're looking to probably rotate it a little bit more. So control, right click again. It's gonna be about there maybe. Zoom out a little bit more to obviously make it match the model a little bit better. Right click and I'm gonna move that almost to there and decrease our tilt just a little. All right, so let's have a look again at our reference image. The eye is on the front portion and sort of finishes under the tail and the V actually goes the whole way up, which means that this needs to come back like so. and should finish where the tail is. So now what we can do is left click and paint away. But we've got that there now. So that's only done it on the one side. So if we flip to the other side, you can see it's not there, but we wanna make sure then on this side, we get everything done first. So if we go back here, make sure not to move your camera, go back to object mode. You wanna click on the tail. So that means that our stencil image isn't going to move. Click on the tail, go back to texture paint, and then we can just do this paint on here again. That'll mean that it's gonna pretty much line up spot on. Um, well, hopefully anyway. So it's lined up there, all painted like so. You can see on the left here, it's painting our file as we need it. Little bits of overhang and so on. Um, like I said before, simply get rid of your texture, go through and paint that in whatever color you need. Um, I won't be doing that in today's video, uh, the full tidy up anyway. Uh, so now we can go back to object mode and flick back to this one. And you can see to our reference photo. So look here. Looking, looking pretty close. So they don't have any of the bleed down onto the back. All right, so that's pretty much lined up at that point. Then we hit three, just gonna do that. And now because we don't wanna change the size of the image, we just wanna change the image itself. We can go back to our little option here and we just don't touch anything else. Leave it tail left, that's fine. We wanna go the right side. Leave it on. Yeah, right side. It's just the right rotation. So you can see here, the gray bit now goes upwards because the V starts down the bottom of this side. Control, right click, get it to the point where we're sort of happy with it. Normally, um, in Substance Painter, if you've got that, I definitely suggest using that instead. But you can just rotate like that and there's no traumas at all. Uh, so I don't actually know how this side looks. I'm gonna quickly um, look this up. So it looks like the V comes right down and that line sort of hits where the stage either is. All right, well, I'm actually going to run with this one because it's fine to me. So just left click again, and paint over it all. So some models doing this, you will notice um, they tend to have mirroring and the mirroring can be really, really annoying depending on what you're doing, of course. That, I'm just gonna check. Okay, so we do have an eye there. So we, we actually do need to shrink that down. So control Z. And then we can simply shift right click, get to a point where we move it across. 
Let's see. About two seconds. I'm just going to get this up on my other screen so I can reference it as I move it. This one looks like it actually needs a bit more rotation as well. The shift, right click to scale. Whoops. Sort of like that, if I look at and the end finishes out there. So I've got that same thing again, go object mode, click on the rudder, go back to texture, don't move anything, and then we can continue painting. Alrighty. So that's basically done our texture for this aircraft. So if I go back to object mode, I'm just going to scroll out a bit. Oops. So you can see. We've now painted that to be pretty much what we want it to be, aside from those couple of little things I mentioned earlier. But now the question I have is, how do we get this into the game? So what you simply want to do is up here on our left window, which should automatically pop up. If it hasn't, you just want to go up to one of these corners here. And you'll see how it's changed to like a crosshair looking icon. Left click and drag out. You can drag a new window. And we just go to UV editor. And then this icon here, we want to open whatever you're working on. So base color or whatever it is, scroll out. You can see all the stuff that we've got in there. So you can see there's a bit of a bit of a mess. There's some things that overlap, things like that. That's just from the UV map sort of painting over those areas. You can go and touch all that up. I'm not going to do that today, as I mentioned before. Um, so once we're here, simply go image and we want to go uh, to save as so as you save your images so i'm just going to open up my d drive here and now let's just go new folder export so i know what they are go into there now i'm going to leave it as wings base color pretty self-explanatory hit save image that's going to save that one for us now that has only saved the wings so if you were to put that in the game right now, you're pretty much going to see only the GIN on the end. Then click the left little image thing again. Go to fuselage base color. It changes the image in here. Go image. Save as. You can see fuselage base color here. Save image. Like so. Now that will save them as they are. Um, like I said, you can go through, touch things up, do all that but this is just the basic rundown of that. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open up that file and I'll show you how we put them into the scene. All right, so here we are with that open. Now we put it into our export file. So you can see they're both there. And if we check the properties of them, details, you can see here, let's put the dimensions in. So that will currently work with the game as it is. Now you can see there as PNG, which the game actually can't see at this stage. So if you press Windows E, and we just want to find um, that tutorial file from the description. Once you've put that into your community folder, so I'm just going to copy one of the ones I already have. Um, so I'm just going to duplicate this one. That's fine. And th this will actually be the one I put in there. Uh, in the description anyway. So I'm gonna change that to template. So you open that up. Now, one of the key things you wanna do first is go into your layout.json file, open that. So use notepad plus plus or something like that. And you can see here, currently mine says Jetstar. What I need to do here is press control F. I suggest using Visual Studio Code, it is free. 
um, and it works a, a treat for stuff like this. So what we're going to do is, because I'm making the template for you guys, I'll do, I'll replace Jetstar with template. So I can simply type in here, template. So you would be doing this in reverse if it were you. So template to something else. And then you can see this icon here that says the C and then next to it, it's like a, I think it's an AC or something like that. If you click that, it'll actually replace all of them. So anything in here that said Jetstar will now be replaced with texture.template and so on. Then we can just save that. Right, so once that's done, go into Sim Objects, Airplanes, you can see here straight away, it says Jetstar. Make sure you change this to whatever yours is called. So in my case, template. Now open this, say it again, Jetstar, Jetstar. So what we want to do is change the name of this to template ai.jetstar, change it ai.template, like so. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, so aircraft.cfg. This is where you configure your aircraft. This is the most, probably the most uh, important step along all of it. Because if it clips, like clashes with another um, livery you have in the game already or something else in the game, it won't load correctly. So I'm not going to go through and change all of these um, for the sake of the video, but I will show you here, this texture here, this is a, a key part. You want to make sure this is whatever your texture dot folder is called. So in this case, it's going to be template, but if you were doing, you know, virgin, it'd be virgin or so on, um, doing that. And then your ATC airline, this is how, if someone else is running your livery, how you would see them. Um, same with the ICAO. And then the call sign that's on it by default. Uh, where are we? All right, so we've done that one. So that one we're gonna leave as is for now. And then obviously underneath you can see the AI model. So this is what the game will put in, uh, which won't destroy your PC in doing, uh, if you don't have exactly the highest, um, highest grade PC. But something else I just remembered is the title. Let's just change this to now and change it to template. Um, or template. There we go. Change this also to template. So you can see AI jet star for the model. Let me change this to template. Otherwise it will not work. Same for the texture underneath. This is just going to template because it already knows what that aircraft is. So you can see here, it says model main. You should leave that as is because that should be the same file unless you change uh, my file name. So you can go through there, do all that as needed. Um, that's pretty much it. Then hit control S to save. As long as the title model and texture have been updated, if you have like, let's say you duplicate it because you're making another one and you haven't changed your last one. As long as they change it, it will appear in the game. So you can see here we've got texture.template, AI template, all that. We're gonna go open up our texture template. Now we've done the fuselage and the wings. So I'm going to open both of these. Um, I think I actually have the PSDs in here. Yeah, I do. Uh, so we want to go and open the one that's just albd.png.dds. So this will be our wings file, which might take a second to load. So this, you can see, this is my, my current jet style one, but I can just go straight over the top. This doesn't really matter. Um, now, what I do suggest, there is um, templates available. I don't have them uh, as I don't use the templates anymore, but you can get all this shading from the default aircraft in there and basically just drag and drop your image underneath and it'll update that. So what we do here is I'm going to open up my file. So export, grab my wings file. And I'm just going to drag and drop that over the top, like so. I, as I said, I'm not fussing around with this. So hit enter, and then go to file. And we'll go to save as. Now you can see it's already knowing where we put it because we opened that from there. Change it from Photoshop to DDS. Once you've put the plugin in, you'll, you'll get that option. Um, like I said, it'll be in the description wings.albd.png. Now this currently won't work for the fact that you want to make sure that you select the actual file so it appends the .dds because for whatever reason when it's just .png 
even though it's a DDS file, it gets saved. I don't know, but do that. Click on the file that we're replacing and then hit save. It'll come up, say it's already existing, fine, whatever, do your thing. It takes a second to load, then this window lo loads up. You do not need to touch anything in here. Simply hit save, give it a minute to do its thing, and it'll save. Now I'm going to quickly do the other one as well. So we'll go to fuselage, ALBD, and we want to go to our export folder, get that ready. You can see here, this is my Jetstar one I did the other day. Simply drag and drop that in there, like so, and we do that. Control S to save. Go to DDS again. I select fuselage comp png.dds, like so. Make sure it says as DDS there. We hit save, like so. Hit save. That'll go through and do its thing. Now, for those of you who have followed my making metallic paints video, um, obviously you would need to do your thing with that and edit out any areas that you didn't want it to shine, like the natural shine sort of thing and so on. Um, in this case, I've got a couple in here, but I'm just going to edit them out of the texture.cfg. This is another thing you'll want to check um, that you've got everything in. So make sure that this is exactly how it is in here. If you're missing some of these lines, um, for whatever reason, if you're not using my template and you've got another, if you're missing one of these, it can make your model really shiny or not work at all. So make sure you check that. We just go back up one folder, um, sorry, back to sim objects and one up from there, which brings us to the template and layout again. Go into your layout. You just want to make sure in here that you have every file that you need in here. Um, so I'm not actually using a wings comp in this file because that would then mean that my Jetstar one will load. So I want to make sure I get rid of both the wings comp files. So highlight those with the little bracket down here to the top one, hit delete. And you can see here we've got another, we've got wings ALBD, that's fine. And we have the ALBD DDS. So you've got a DDS and JSON for each one. Make sure you've got that. Um, we got ALBD again. What else have we got here? So you can see here, this isn't the correct one. See how it ends in .png? The game won't see this. So make sure you get rid of that, like so. All right, so we've got rid of that. And then we just want to go through here and find anything else. So fuselage.com we don't have in this file. We get rid of that as well. You just want to make sure you go through all here, make sure any file that you're wanting to reference is there. If it's not referenced, leave it out. Um, basically, if it's missing from this configuration um, and you've put a custom file in, it won't load it. But if you're not wanting a custom file and you're just sort of wanting the, like, for example, the engines that are there from the default game in your model, instead of, in this case, it'd be white engines, um, you might want to make sure that you've got that referenced in here. So you'll need a .dds file and JSON for each. If you don't have a base model to go off, just grab it out of the default game. All right, so if we save this now, I'm gonna go ahead and boot up my game. So I'll be back with you once that loads. And hopefully we should have a Virgin Australia 8K livery sitting there for us. All right, so now we're here in the hangar. Simply hit profile, go to hangar. You can see here, go down to the bottom or press F12. Select deliveries. Now, obviously, we want to find our version uh, one in here, which we actually saved as a Jetstar. So you'll see it comes up as Jetstar currently. But once we click that, this should show the version files that we did. There we go. So you can see by doing that, um, can't rotate because the game is broken right now. But we go back to profile. That's a hanger. You can click on that and rotate around your hanger. So you can see. There's obviously a few areas that it's pulling from the other livery, which I'll get out um, before this template's released. But you can see by doing that, I've got a very high quality uh, 8K livery just out of that file. So you can see that's all there. The painting's done with the tail. 
almost lines up perfectly. But as I was saying, bits at the back here aren't actually there, so you'd want to get rid of them and tidy that up. Anywhere where it overlaps, it shouldn't. For example, the, the stab here at the back, um, where it actually adjusts, this is unpainted in real life. So you'd want to trim that area out. Put the front of the, the vertical stab back there, it's painted, so you want to get rid of that. Anywhere else that's, uh, of course, you don't need it. You go through and do that, but there's a basic overview. I'm sorry for the length of the video. I tried to get it done as quick as possible, but at the end of the day, I didn't want to cut anything out either. Now, I'm here for questions. If you need to, leave them in the comments. But if you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.